The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman at 8.06 in the morning. I'm doing this uh, pre-recorded show so that it'll be played at noon. And, of course, if it's played at noon, it'll be 8 to 8.30 here and 12 to 12.30 then. Then, of course, uh, you get uh, Tommy O'Brien, a great show that he has, just summarizing where we are, what we're looking at, and all these different stocks and uh, different parameters overnight that have been hit. So we're looking at the Dow right now with a close. You can see this chart. And the chart says that there is a, a close at 26,119. When I did all my work from the close yesterday into the evening and then this morning, I just kept saying to myself, wow, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we are always looking for at least a peak D. That's the fourth highest peak. Let me just do this quickly because we always have new people. Um, and there it is. I'll just say quickly that we are always looking for the lowest low bar to start a count to the upside. There are seven peaks that, that can be made, higher peaks, but I alphabetize them, A, B, C, D, E, F, G on the way up. But it's that fourth highest peak, peak D, where other things can happen. The patterns I'm looking for are, let me just do this right now, are straight line moves up or down, the cup formation or the arch formation, or a mix, the lowercase h, which is like, the, uh, looks like a, a, we call them dreaded h, because if it takes out the left side low, that's why it's red, it can keep going lower. And on the right, you've got very positive green, because if it makes a cup formation or a V formation, takes out the left side lip high, that can go much higher. So I keep it as simple as possible. But the pattern that I've been looking at, which is so important, is this Chapman Wave falling X formation, which leads often to a Chapman Wave one-to-one -one parallel extension cup pattern. So that long handle, expanding cone, declining cone, looks like an X. Break out to the upside, you can go much higher. But if this line, especially if it has the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, in other words, just below it, I draw another little line that says, every time the price gets there, for some reason it just gets repelled, watch out because you're going to make the U, there's a, a, a the, the arch formation, there's a fighting pattern. So here we are, we have the falling axe, and I drew in the arch formation. And as I went through these, look, Peak D in the in the down, the daily, the MACD's down, the stochastic's very weak. The S&P, oh, 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 let me just tell you that the futures, YM, this is a little strange. I made a peak C. I, have to, I can't even call it an alternate count. It's just very unusual, but I'm going with the cash, and I'm, I'm calling that a D. But look at that falling X pattern. Now the futures were actually positive for a moment. They, I had a Chapman Wave trend gauge reading, uh, yesterday that was very high, which said there should be a 9 to 11 point at least rally over uh, within the next two days. Well, overnight, you got more than that. And then it gave it all back, gave it back. Look, we're down 287 in the futures. So let me show you why I'm a little, a little cautious here. And I said to subscribers, caution prevails because that pattern that I'm looking at, the H pattern, and I need to just draw this in here. There's the falling axe and it got repelled at the wrong, look how many times, twice it got hit. Look, since it made the high at 32, 33.33 in the cash S&P, you've had two lower highs, slightly lower highs, and then a sharp move to the 200 period moving average, a sharp rebound yesterday that stalled right at the line, and now you're finding underneath it. So yes, we could still have an intraday rally, but I think that we're starting just to have this digester phase that I've been talking about for a little while. I think it's still continuing from the highs that were made around about the 6th or the 8th of, of June. So now let's see the, the QQQ NDX. Oh, let me just show you this. This is the ESU 2O. There is what I show subscribers, and I, show, I send this out to the den every day. I show this pattern. Uh, let me do the 120-minute chart because this is exactly what I show. I show the daily, the weekly, 
and the 120 minute chart. And you can see there's the falling axe, it's getting repelled, it's gone underneath the 14 period moving average again. Uh, it's down 31 at 3,075. Can you believe it was almost unchanged just an hour or so ago, maybe two hours ago? Yeah, two hours ago. And now it's down sharply. And look, the MACD, the moving average is weak, stochastic is weak. And we had the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation, which says when the beak is finished, there could be a very sharp rally, and then you're on your own. <laughs> well, it rallied beautifully, and now you're on your own. So I think we, we have a chance to roll over here, but it's only the start, unless you're in the, in the uh, E-mini, unless you take a 33,038. That says, oops, be careful, you're going to make an H formation, maybe even test the 200 period moving average at 2968. But I'd rather say this is a consolidation at this particular point. So for subscribers, we still long the Dow, we still long all these positions, but we've added some shorts as of right now. That's where um, we are. So um, QQQ, NDX 100. Look at this rebound, the V-shaped formation, 247.82 was the high just six sessions ago. Yep. And now what we're looking at is the chance that this could roll over a little bit. The MACD is kind of weak. The stochastic's weak. On balance volume is very strong. And now let's look at the futures. NQ, let's see what we've got there. And there it is. Futures stalling out a little bit, potentially making that pattern that I talk about, the falling axe. It's a little double top there and a sharp decline. Okay. So it makes it real simple. In, in all cases, if there's a reversal in the next few days, going to a new recovery high, Watch out, we could retest the most recent highs. Um, but let's see what happens. I think the consolidation is going to go on. IWM, and remember, this is a pre, pre this is an early show. This is not my usual noontime show. This is now 8, 12 in the morning. Um, and we're looking at 180, minus 183 in the one, at 139.94 for the IWM. It has an even greater potential for a falling axe pattern because look at the resistance levels. It doesn't mean to say you can't come rebounding back, but it says you can get, could get back in to the 139 area, 137 area. So we've got to watch this closely. This is some news later today that sparks a fantastic rally. I think we, we're looking at lower highs and lower lows just for the very short term. Now let's go to gold. Gold should be rallying, but no, it's down 10 at 1725. Where is it being repelled? Chapway falling axe formation with the inside track repellent zone working beautifully and it's pulling back but it's not breaking down it's just pulling back at 70 it starts to break down if it goes under 1716 1716 1712 that's his ops now it's in a real problem because it's going to make the h pattern but right now what you need to see is some kind of reversal on really um intense selling pressure where money wants to flow back into the security of gold and the TLT will go then a moment so you've got 17 you need to see a break into the 17 58, 1762 level in gold to say it's going higher. Silver right now, this is in the morning, 8.15 in the morning, 8.30 in the morning. It's, it's breaking down, same patterns, failing, making the arch pattern. Let's see what's happening with the dollar. Is the dollar rallying? Well, it's a rallying a little bit. It's up six ticks at 97.14. It's really stuck here. It needs to get above 97.90 to 98.20. And then I'll say, hey, Dollar has a chance now to have a good rebound from the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart. Let's just have a look at the TLT. The TLT is bonds, of course, 124 up at 161.89. That has made the arch formation. Will it find, be found as a security blanket as people say, oh man, uh, volatility in stocks, meaning going down. Let's go back to the safety of bonds. And you'll know that if bonds in the next four sessions, by Tuesday of next week, if the bonds are trading above 165 and the market is still weak, even if you're in for a deeper correction in the market, and uh, the TLT is going to be the security blanket if it just pulls back and comes back to the 160 level. It says, hey, ho hum. And we've been here before. That's what happened. Early show. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. I'm Basil Chapman here. This is 8 to 18 in the morning, last segment to go. And then you go to Tommy Jr. for a really great show, uh, summarizing everything that's been going on in the markets overnight, etc. So the had your peak D. Remember, we're always looking at D. Here's your first D. There's your second D in the 10-minute chart. Look, you ran all the way to 31. It's hard to believe. 3120 round number high. And now you're down to 30. You went down to 30, uh, 64. Is that correct? No, you were at 36.64. At this point, you went to 30.73. Um, 30 and now you're trading at 30.85. So I'm not sure whether I made a mistake by saying uh, to the subscribers, to be, uh, there are just specific areas that we're actually looking at a uh, potential short. Um, but maybe this is the wrong thing to do. I don't like to do it when we were down. It was actually maybe the low of the day. It doesn't matter. When I am looking at, oh, yesterday in my show, when I was doing the show for Larry, I had that, uh, that peak D, um, and the, that was a pullback. So here we are on the 10-minute chart again to peak D, and a big, big pullback. We'll see what happens. I'll just I'll give you parameters. If, if the 3060 low is taken out by 10.30 this morning, Eastern time, that's going to say, you know, weakness all day, all rallies will probably fail. It's a lot of selling pressure going on. If there's a rebound and all of a sudden you're looking at not 31.20, the high that was made just at uh, 530 this morning or six, whatever it was. If, in fact, it goes even higher and it goes to five to three, one, three, oh. It says, not yet ready, just as kind of a consolidation, a rotation through the markets. So let me just go through this again. I, I, want, I want to get a question that I got, and I thought it was a very good question. It's sort of pertinent to exactly where we are. I'm talking about Ds, right? So here's Billy Billy. Billy Billy, is that what it's called? Billy Billy Inc., ADS. I, I think it's a Chinese company of some sort. So here in the um, 
10, 120 minute chart is going to peak A, B, C, D. So it's pulling back a little bit. And the question is, uh, let's see. So the question is, um, here we go. Um, hi, Basil. Good morning. I have no position, but was scanning for potential intraday. How should I enter for intraday? May I need to look at a 15-minute chart? 15? Six stocks with higher highs make new highs. That's what I always say. And this one, if my notation is correct, is in leg D. Correct. Absolutely. What is the significance of a round number higher? I always look at that when you're in the potential little toppy area. Uh, this one made a 42 high. Thanks. Anikuma. So, Anikuma, I'm looking at this. And you did everything correctly. First of all, remember, stocks that are making new highs, those are not really the ones that you need to short. Now, we happen to choose a particular sector that was almost at a new high as a potential short for the day. I, I've got such a tight stop, 1.5%, just, you know, just tiny percent. But there's a chance that we could get about 3% or 4% on the downside, and maybe more. I just don't know yet. We haven't even uh, seen any action since we got in. Um, uh, so that's different because I've done my analysis and it's a sector and I've looked at the stocks and most of them are in these D's and E's and they look like they need to at least digest a little bit. So in this particular case, you're absolutely correct, but you've got to be careful. So what would I do? I do the 120 minute chart. As I say, there, there it is, it's made a peak D. I use the 42 as a stop. It's at 41.33 up 22 cents uh, pre-market. So you've got yourself a little more than I would like as a stop. It's about a two and a half percent. This is not one of those that I'd, I'd favor. But what I would say is that 42 level, if it isn't taken out in two days, yes, this will become some kind of a top. But I actually so much I see so much support between 38 and 37 that you'd have to be real quick and you'd have to time it really well. So yes, you're looking at the correct thing. Use the 15 minute chart. See if you can get a P, D or E in the Chapman Wave methodology with the technical starting to fail. But this is not the perfect. This is one that you want to say, wow, leg C in the monthly chart, leg F, maybe even recycled in the, in the um, weekly chart, and leg D, it looks like it wants to pull back to the 37, 35 area. So obviously there's a short, yep, that would be very nice if it works out. But it's not perfect because I would rather be looking at this and saying, Billy, Billy, uh, is kind of the stock you want to be looking at for the next big pullback in the market to be buying. So yes, if you're very quick, you can do that. So you've answered your own questions correctly. You've even said stocks with higher highs make new highs. So I'm just saying that 42 round number is a signal. And if today there's another round number lower than 42, you'll have two that says you break above that and, and it could go even higher. But that's your level. So I would put 42.01 as a stop if you're using this. Personally, I think that this is more a high risk because if this market suddenly turns up, the best of the best, meaning the ones that are making you highs, are the quickest to snap to the upside. And they also are the ones that most people are looking at to short for some reason. But you should be looking at other things. Shorts, the weakest ones are really the best shorts. Okay, so we did that. Now I want you to go through this as a scenario. Let me just do this. I'll use the Dow. Everybody always asks me, why do I use the Dow? I've used the Dow for 40 something more and more. Every year. I made a call on the Dow almost every single day for the last many, many decades. So that's the one. But I do the same thing with S&P or the others. It doesn't make any difference. I just talk about the Dow and use it because we are along the Dow from the day of the low, 23rd of March, and then at 210 in the diamonds. So we're still long. I want to keep that long as long as those longs as long as possible. Today we'll probably be rotating the option. We'll see what happens. So there's the H pattern that I drew in. So this is the potential, but it's just the potential. Uh, I mean, with MACD is a little bit weak, stochastic is very weak. And it says to me there's a greater chance now that the upside is limited. Rather think of it that way. So for subscribers, I always do this. Uh, maybe I'll just show you there, right here. What I've done, uh, yeah, let me just show you this. So this is what I do every day for subscribers. I show, I give an outline. I, I show the daily chart with no MACD or stochastic, and I do the analysis right there. Then I do the same thing, the same thing with my MACD and stochastic and relative strength uh, and the on balance volume. And it has slightly different connotations and implications, but it's not so crowded. And this one is the 120 minute. And you can see the chapman wave automated resistance points starting from 26,300 to 26,400. They're right there. They've stalled the, the 120 minute chart. And the MACD is good. 
and the stochastics it's under under 80 percent is 78 percent so yeah this could make an h pattern here as well so I, I give the synopsis and i'll tell you what to look for usually i say after 130 um or uh, I, I give a time on when to look at what should be happening if the market is doing a particular thing so i wouldn't be surprised right now if we're getting it i'm going to get a little bounce for all i know we might have made the low of the day who knows but the fact is that all of the charts are suggesting that there's a lot of upside resistance. And because of that, I'm looking at some kind of a consolidation. I still think there are just too many people that are not in the market. Yes, there's a whole bunch of, of Robin Hooders. That's another category altogether. But the main thrust of the market in terms of mm, uh, people over 40 to 60 and then people over 60 it used to be the huge bunch over 60 who always put money in the market i would not be surprised if in this smash to the downside on the um, at 24,843 on the 15th of june a lot of people got out of the market but i wouldn't be surprised um, if the major thrust to the downside on the 14th a month earlier 14th of may got a lot of a lot of people out of the market that was vicious, and it held and started a beautiful trend line to the upside. We've taken that out. That's a hint to say it's just slightly weakening. But the, the nine-period moving average, the green line, is still way above the 14-period moving average. So that says there's still internal strength. So don't think this is just going to be an easy slide. I think it's going to be a choppy slide. I think it'll wait, make its way at some point to doubt 25,671. Uh, now, I believe that's my final cue. I'm out of here. Uh, Tommy Jr. is going to be taking over. And...